On November 16, 2004, NASA made history by launching the X-43 Air, the first ever air-breathing hypersonic vehicle, into the atmosphere. This achievement marked a major milestone in the quest to develop hypersonic flight technology. The X-43A was equipped with a scrangered engine, which allowed it to reach speeds of Mach 10 or 10 times the speed of sound. This was a major achievement, as previous attempts to develop hypersonic flight technology had been limited to Mach 3 to 5 speeds. Now you might be thinking that Mach 10 is an impressive feat, but what exactly is it? And is it possible to reach Mach 10 in a jet? Let's discover the answers to these questions in today's video. Mach 10 is the equivalent of 7672.69 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, it would take you less than an hour to travel from New York to Los Angeles at Mach 10 speeds. This speed is also known as hypersonic speed. It is so fast that it is difficult to achieve and maintain for sustained periods of time, and only a handful of aircraft, missiles, and rockets have ever been able to reach Mach 10, even then only for short periods of time. Now the science of Mach 10 is very complex and involves a lot of physics. But do not worry, I am here to explain it to you in a simple way. In order to understand Mach 10, we need to first understand the basics of sound and how it travels. As you likely learned in school, sound is a type of energy that travels through the air or any other medium in the form of waves. These waves are caused by a vibrating object such as a person talking, a musical instrument playing, or an engine running. The frequency of the sound waves determines the pitch of the sound. For example, a low pitch sound has waves that vibrate slowly, while a high pitch sound has waves that vibrate quickly. The speed of sound is also determined by the properties of the medium, through which the sound waves are traveling. For example, the speed of sound in air is about 340 meters per second, but it is much faster in water, about 1,500 meters per second. The speed of sound also depends on temperature. In general, the higher the temperature, the faster the speed of sound. Now, for an object to reach Mach 10, it must first obtain a temperature of about 3,600 degrees. The majority of materials are rendered useless at such high temperatures, but there are a few that can withstand the heat. There are two types of objects that can reach Mach 10, man-made and natural. Man-made objects are typically rockets, missiles, or jets. These objects use a combination of heat-resistant materials and extreme cooling methods to achieve such high speeds. Natural objects are typically large meteorites or comet fragments. These objects are already heated to high temperatures when they enter the atmosphere, and they also benefit from the frictionless environment of space. Now, one of the biggest challenges of reaching March 10 is the amount of friction that is generated. At these high speeds, the air molecules are compressed so much that they create a tremendous amount of friction. This friction can cause the aircraft to heat up to extremely high temperatures, which can damage the aircraft and cause it to lose control. Another challenge of reaching March 10 is the amount of fuel that is required. To reach these high speeds, the aircraft needs to carry a large amount of fuel, which makes it heavier and less agile. And also the noise generated by an aircraft traveling at Mach 10 can be deafening. The sound waves created by the aircraft are so intense that they can cause damage to the ears, and even death in some cases. Now that you understand what March 10 is and how it works, let's move on to the main topic of this video. Is it possible to reach March 10 in a jet? But before that, let's take a look at the fastest jet in the world and how fast it can go. The fastest jet in the world is the SR-71 Blackbird. This jet can fly at speeds of up to Mach 3 or about 2200 miles per hour. The Blackbird was developed in the 1960s by the United States Air Force and was used for reconnaissance missions during the Cold War. While the Blackbird is no longer in service, it remains the fastest jet in the world, and its incredible speed is just one of the many impressive features of this amazing aircraft. Now, the answer to the question, is it possible to reach Mach 10 in a jet, is a bit complicated. However, in short, the answer is yes, it is possible to reach Mach 10 in a jet. There are a few important factors to consider though. First, Mach 10 is equivalent to about 7672.69 miles per hour. This is incredibly fast and would require a jet to have an extremely powerful end. Jets are powered by engines that work by sucking in air and turning it into thrust. But in order to reach Mach 10, a jet would need to be able to suck in enough air to generate the necessary thrust. And unfortunately, the physics of suction limits the amount of air that can be drawn in by an engine. Additionally, when an object moves through a fluid, the fluid exerts a drag force on the object. The faster the object moves, the greater the drag force. Jet engines work by sucking in air and using it to push the aircraft forward. But as the aircraft moves faster and faster, the drag force becomes so great that it eventually overcomes the thrust from the engine. So while it is technically possible to reach Mach 10 in a jet, it is not practical or possible with current technology. Perhaps one day we will develop the technology to reach these amazing speeds. For now, Mach 10 will remain a dream. 
Now, there are a few different ways that match tem could be achieved, but the most likely way is through the use of a scrangered engine. The same engine that was used in the S-43 Air, a hypersonic aircraft that reached a speed of Mach 10 in 2004. As aforementioned at the beginning of the video, scrangered engines work by using the high-speed air that is already flowing through the engine to compress the fuel. This makes the engine much more efficient and enables it to reach very high speed. March 10 is the highest speed that has been theoretically achieved with a scrangered engine, but it has not been possible to build an engine that can reach that speed in practice. There are a few other ways that March 10 could be achieved, but they are all much less likely. For example, a reaction engine could be used, but the fuel required would be too expensive, and the engine would be too large. Additionally, a pulse detonation engine could theoretically reach Mach 10, but the engines are very loud and have not been perfected for use in aircraft. Now, with the development of hypersonic travel, the need for super-skilled pilots to handle Mach 10 speed will also be needed. In order to become a hypersonic pilot, individuals must possess a high level of skill and training. In addition, they must be able to handle the immense amount of pressure that comes with flying at such high speeds. These pilots will need also to have excellent reaction times and reflexes, as well as the ability to think and act quickly in order to make the best decisions at high speeds. Now, theoretically, reaching March 10 would have a number of benefits, both for individuals and for society as a whole. For one, it would dramatically reduce travel times. A trip from New York to Los Angeles, which currently takes around six hours by plane, would take less than half an hour if Mach 10 travel were possible. This would revolutionize the way we travel making it possible to cross great distances in a fraction of the time. Additionally, Mach 10 would allow for easier access to space, as it would effectively overcome the atmosphere's drag. This would enable cheaper and faster space travel, which would in turn lead to a number of other benefits, such as the ability to conduct more space-based research and the enablement of colonizing other planets. Finally, reaching Mach 10 would simply be an incredible achievement that would show humanity's capability and further our understanding of the universe. Now imagine if you ever got a chance to travel at Mach 10. How would it be? How can you stay safe while flying at Mach 10? At Mach 10, you will be traveling at around 12,347 kilometers per hour. But while Mach 10 is super fast, it's also incredibly dangerous. If you were to travel at Mach 10, you would need to be inside a specially designed aircraft that could protect you from the enormous forces at work. You would also need to wear a specialized suit that would keep you safe and prevent you from passing out due to the extreme g-forces. So while Mach 10 may be an incredible experience, it's also one that comes with a lot of risk. But if you did everything right, it would be an amazing experience. You would feel a huge rush of adrenaline as you sit through the sky at unbelievable speeds. And there you have it guys, we've come to the end of our exploration of Mach 10. As we've seen, this incredible speed is only possible through a combination of extreme technology and bravery on the part of the pilots. What's next for Mach 10? Only time will tell, but one thing is for sure, the future of flight is looking very exciting indeed. We hope you found this video informative, and if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.